Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm here today with my good friend John Bradburn, <laughs> servant of God John Bradburn. I thought I'd showcase some of his other books for you. I'll, I'll be uh, very clear about this. It's so maybe you are looking for some Christmas gift ideas. And John Bradburn's poetry is so uplifting and brings me so much closer to God and nature and it's just so beautiful. I thought I would share some of the books with you. Um, the first one, this is always a popular choice for Christmas gifts, one of the Book of Days, a little daily reader. So this is John Bradburn's Book of Days. They are select poems selected by David Crystal. You can see it's very much a little pocket-sized book. Well, maybe you can't see, I'll put my hand up against it. It's a pocket-sized book, but it's a little bit thick. Um, not terribly, I'd say maybe right around an inch. Um, and you could easily slip this into any bag. It wouldn't take up much space on your desk, and of course, did I say all of these are available to purchase from johnbradburn.com, but you can also see all the poems for free at johnbradburnpoems.com. And they're free there, but you're not gonna have them somewhere you can handily take on a retreat with you or on vacation, somewhere where you don't have internet. This is much more handy to just have sitting on your desk. Let's jump in. Um, very plain so far, right? Let's see here. It is from Holy Island Press for the John Bradburn Memorial Society, first published in 2004. Yep, all designed by, oh, and it's designed by Hillary Crystal. <laughs> Probably a family affair there. Let's see, preface. Oh, well, there's a preface that'll tell us. It may seem an impossible task to choose 366 poetic vignettes one for each day of the year to represent the theological thought of John Bradburn, given his vast output of poetry, many thousands of poems, some of which contain many thousands of lines. In practice, it proved not to be so difficult because his writing displays such sharpness of focus. Just five major themes characterize the vast majority of his theological work. Love as a driving force beneath everything. Two. Sorry, I'm adding the numbers. These are bullet points. Two, the nature of the Trinity and its expression in human affairs. Three, the cosmic event of the incarnation related to the Eucharist. Four, the nature and power of faith and prayer. And five, the unique role of Mary in history and in church. As you will find in this collection, John Bradman returns repeatedly to these themes, expressing them in many different ways, using a dazzling array of metaphors and allusions. How did I select the extracts? While preparing the poems for publication, I kept encountering examples which, to my mind, expressed a particularly powerful insight in a particularly striking way. There have been many times where John Bradburn has simply taken my breath away. He has stopped me working and made me think. When I have managed to get back to work, the thought has stayed with me, and for much more than a day. These work-stopping moments have provided the core of this collection, supplemented by several prayer poems and everyday reflections. Although the book falls in the genre of thought for the day, it may aptly be more conceived as a thought for a week or a month or indeed a lifetime. And that preface is by David Crystal. In our normal critique, I will point out occasionally there are hyphenated words. That is the word output. Where did I find another one? Supplemented reflections. There are more natural break than the last book I critiqued. Um, but you know, I still don't like hyphenated words. I think we're only going to find that in the preface. And why do you know, do you know who David Crystal is friends and why we care how he selected these? He is the professor who actually put all of the John Bradburn poems on the website. He built the website. He cataloged every poem John Bradburn ever wrote. And if you haven't told you yet, John Bradburn is the in the Guinness World Book of Records, so I didn't just make this up, excuse me, as the most prolific poet in the English language. Is he gonna stay up there? Let's put a little seashell back up. The most prolific poet in the English language. So how do you pick just 366 poems? At least he is super familiar with them and you know he picked some good ones. This is kind of interesting because the January is in a, like a dark gray and then the one is in a dark letter, so it's on the outside corners. That's gonna be super easy to find your day 
kudos. <laughs> not everyone does that. We reviewed a day by day book recently that did not do that and it drove me crazy. So right there on the outside, super easy to find. The pages then are not numbered, just the dates. Um, it does have a little curly cue at the bottom. And you can see, I don't know that, I don't feel like hyphenated words are gonna be an issue. I'm flipping through. The poems, he's picked very short selections in them. So if you were like, didn't he say that some of the poems are thousands of lines long? He's not giving you all that in a day. He's just picked a few lines. Let's start with January 1st, a free one to get you started. It is not possible to think of God without the Virgin Mary being there. Deep in the well, whence springs the thought since trod on earth that Prince of Peace who breathed our air there he ever flows. Oops, I already got it wrong. Let me try again. It is not possible to think of God without the Virgin Mary being there. Deep in the well, when springs the thought since trod, on earth that Prince of Peace who breathed our air, there goes he ever flows through time and space, incarnate with Maria, Queen of Grace. Oh, lovely. Um, so it... Perhaps, oh, sorry, that is from Virgo Virginum in 1968. And again, if you want to see the whole poem, then you could type that in. You're going to need the date. Sometimes he used the same title for multiple poems, so you, you're going to need the date. Um, and you can type that into the website, johnbradburnpoems.com, and then you can see the whole poem, should you like. Um, but they're not terribly long, and... I do believe since this is a feast day for Mary, perhaps David considered the days. Um, let's just be silly then. Let's pick February 14th as a secular holiday, Valentine's, St. Valentine's Day. Well, secular and, and, um, and religious, right? Depending on how you celebrate. But let's look, February 14th, Elemental, 1970. And note, they are at the bottom of it in bold. Uh, <laughs> Chastity is that thrilling height of spirit which pirouettes upon the force of life. Its look is bright. Its right is to inherit. Total possession of its love run rife. Beautiful. So he did really consider the day when he did them. It's so funny. I thought at first this poem was a, f a foreign word. And when you read it out loud, you hear it. Told you so aglow. 1969. This is on May 8th. She is the church. The church can be none other than she whose frame contained our Lord and God, than she whose fans contained our reigning brother, hidden in tents as blent with him she trod. I will warn you, John Bradburn, well, he wrote in English. He wrote in English, English, <laughs> British English. So occasionally, Americans, you're going to find a word that you may not know. Um, Lovely. I wonder, there, there is a chance that some of these will be the same poem, maybe different sections of the same poem. I'm not going to go through. We're already at eight minutes. It, this is a wonderful, beautiful book. I'm, I'm like so tempted to read Christmas Day and so many days to you. Um, I read you some short portions. That's it. And it just, does it end December 31st? It ends and then there's, oh, there's a little, there's a little bonus one at the end. What did he do about February? I do want to check that quick because this doesn't have a year on it. So what does he do about our end of our friend February? He does, there is something for February 29th. So you could use this any year. Beautiful little book, highly recommending that. How about this one then, something completely different. It's a much bigger book, you can see. But it's also a very much a slimmer book. Hmm, confusing. John Bradburn's Matemwa and poems and pictures edited by David and Hillary Crystal. And so Matemwa, when John Bradburn was there, was the leprosy colony. I'll read on the back to you. John Bradburn wrote many poems about Matemwa leprosy settlement during his time there in the 1970s. From them, it is possible to recreate a vivid picture of the place, its people, and its setting in the Zimbabwean countryside of Mashona land. The book uses the poems to provide a commentary on a selection of recent and archived photographs which vividly capture the special character of Matemwa then and now. And if I hadn't said all these, all the profits from the sales of these books go to the John Bradburn Memorial Society. Um, 
And there's a little picture there also of Matemwa. Now, currently, Matemwa still exists, friends. It is not exclusively a leprosy colony anymore. There are people there with various mental and physical disabilities, and their families live in little huts around the care center. It is very much a community and very much in need of our support. Some of the ongoing projects have been to provide chickens, both egg laying um, and meat. I think there's meat and egg chickens. There are as well, I believe, a piggery. There was a fish project at one point. I'm not 100% sure. Um, of course, the water projects, they recently put in water tanks and they've been digging for a new, or sorry, drilling for a new well so that they could have both water catchment in the rainy season as well as the well for in dry season should the tanks run dry. Um, let's see what else. A mango grove they've put in. Mangoes are so amazingly nutritious. And of course, any surplus that's left over from feeding the people there and helping them be self-sustainable will go to the local community. They are going to sell to local community. Another way to be self-sustaining because they do have to pay for the medications, which are very expensive in a rural area. Whew. Still published by Holy Island Press for the John Bradbury Memorial Society. This was published in 2000. And then it says, while it was published by Holy Island Press, it was printed by W.O. Jones, who was, all, that's also a UK um, company. The front cover was the J Jacarunda Avenue at Matemwa. The back cover is, was a view of Matemwa Mount, where some of the leprosy settlement buildings in the foreground. Sorry, friends, it is a blustery fall day. I don't know that you can see the leaves falling down, but you can definitely see our friend John Bradburn falling down. I'm gonna try one more time, maybe put this little rock here in front of him as well. Is that better? We'll see if he stays there. Let's see, table of contents is centered, um, which kind of works for this. Oh, goodness, because it doesn't matter if you read them in order or not. We're just gonna keep our friend down here. Because um, it doesn't matter if you read them in order or not, but it gives you the page number. Most of the poems have the year. Remember, that's very important to know the year if you wanna look them up. Oh, about Matema. So it's going to tell you about Matema as well as there's a map. Oh, and it does tell you some of the needs of the colony as well. Very nice. It says, but all pictures need explanation. These have come, oh, most of the photographs were taken during visits to the area in 1998 and 1999. They have been supplemented by others taken from the archives of the John Bradburn Memorial Society, but all pictures need explanation. And these come from John Bradburn's own vivid poetic descriptions and profound spiritual insights into the meaning of Matema, which he called a miracle of God, which were written during his times of service there. There is a little bit about John Bradburn. He was actually born in Cumbria, the son of an Anglican clergyman. So he's actually born in England, friends. And um, <laughs> I won't tell you his whole journey. His journey is, a, is, is several books of themselves, but it gives you a little two-pager there. Um, this one does have page numbers. They're down in the bottom outside corners. So easy, easy peasy to find. So on this one, there's a poem here, pictures here with a caption. Uh, and then that's not a solid format. You can see the format changes. Um, they tell you what poems it's from down here. See, So again, you can go to the website and look up the poem, the full poem online. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Just big blocks of, of poetry here. And I, I think that's lovely because the pictures, they've selected poems that go with them. Uh, let's pick one here. We'll pick this one. This is from the Lepers of Matemwa, 1971. It is the middle of the book, pages 18 and 19. So now you know how many there are. Um, and here is John Brown with Peter and Jessica. And over here is Matemwa in the 1990s, um, after John Bradburn had been killed. This is villagers and the staff frame a real sign of progress. They had a new vehicle. Let's read the poem. Again, this is from the Lepers of Matemwa by, by Servant of God, John Bradburn in 1971. This people is preeminently strong, a towering example, great in faith. 
that has been the substance of their lives so long as world song has receded like a wraith, proud that their pride is beaten down to naught, tremendous in their lowliness, unfeigned, and patient to a point of iron wrought, truly by lord of it whose love has reigned, as to their orisons and psalms and hymns, persuasive these to such a high degree, tuneful, not very, that the like pious whims are those of most of us. To theirs the key turns early in the gate of paradise, oft taken as by storm and in a trice. Metemwa is a paradox, a ground, for dogs like pariahs and men like ghouls, fully equipped it is with fowls but fools, are few here save in Christ where they abound. Long lazy days spend many on their backs, leisure's a pleasure they are slow to mar. And quick to recognize, these lepers are light-minded oft where soft abundance lacks. The ground is hard whereon they love to lie, lingering over noon and after dark. Their beds may know such, know much heaviness. Yet hark, a passer may to psalms neat scarlet sky, a place to paradox in grace as fit, as any to embrace the God of it. Compounded be my musing, it will make less of a motley on the present page, then four score folk in yoke upon this stage to intermi intermittent ills as out those break. Pilgrims are these that cross and cross again this little stage where eighty brittle huts wobble upon each deluge huge wind whence ruts and rifts appear. Queer city of the plain. Gomorrah is a goner. Sodom's groan went down long since. But this Metemwa's sins are answered for by penitence that wins. It's willy-nilly ways, if ills atone. Metemwa means you are cut off. The height from which it takes its name stands bathed in light. You are cut off. From what? A world that would tempt more to evil, less augment your good? Confounded be my musing, if it leads to thoughts chaotic, not to ordered deeds. And I'll leave you there, friends. Lovely, lovely reflection on these people. The people in place of Metemwa. Um, it's very beautiful. It does end with a list of the illustrations. So in case you're looking for a particular place instead of a particular poem, you may do that as well. Lovely. God bless you, friends. Um, let us just quickly say the little prayer that's on the back of the prayer card here. In the nomine patris, et filii, et spiritus sancti. Amen. God our Father, your servant John Randall Bradburn, showed the power of your love by his life and death. May his love of Christ and of Mary, his mother, together with his selfless service to those considered least in the world, be a model for us to follow. We therefore ask for a favor through his intercession, so that his generosity and holiness may be recognized by the whole church. Say your intercession here. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.